How's it going everyone? In this video we're going to be taking a look at a Kaggle competition. So in the realm of data science, it's a little different than let's say being a developer. If you were a developer, employers might ask what kind of open source contributions you have. Whereas with machine learning, it's a lot of Kaggle competitions as well as side projects. Essentially the way Kaggle works is they will host data science competitions and companies will actually pay them to get the data scientists to try and come up with a solution to their problem. And so there was a famous example where Netflix offered a $1 million prize and a bunch of teams ended up coming up with different models in order to try and solve the problem. And what ended up happening is that the model was actually too complicated to put into production. But that doesn't mean companies haven't benefited from this. So for example, Allstate, the insurance company, uh, had the, basically they posted a challenge where the data scientists had to predict whether a car crash would happen given the attributes of drivers. And they actually ended up improving the model by 271%. And if you're an insurance company, if you're able to more accurately predict when car crashes will happen, you can make more money by charging the riskiest people uh, a higher rate, kind of like how young males get charged more for car insurance. Anyways, so in this video, we're gonna be walking through a competition where we had to determine whether a image contained a cactus or not. And so to start, we're going to import the following library. So we have CV2. For those of you not familiar with CV2, essentially it's useful for when working with images in Python. We have OS for working with the OS, pandas, numpy, matplotlib, you should all be familiar with those. And then we'll be using Keras for the convolutional neural network. Um, I don't know if I can show you guys this, but essentially what Kegel gave us was a sample CSV and then our test and train data. And so if we go into test, for example, we have here a whole bunch of images and the same thing for train and the train CSV right here basically tells us whether an image with a specific ID is a, has a cactus in it or not. If it does, it'll be a one. If it doesn't, then it'll be a zero. And so going back here, so we'll go ahead and load that CSV right there. So as you can see, the picture with this ID has a cactus as well as all the other ones. If we wanted to take a look at what an image looked like, we could use CV2. And this isn't very clear, but I'm, I'm not too sure if that has cactus or not. But anyways, um, so when I was first starting out, this confused me. And so the picture right here, it's 32 by 32 pixels, but it also has a third dimension. And the third dimension refers to the uh, color and so if it was an RGB image it would be a 3 here and if it was a grayscale image it would be a 1. If it's a grayscale image then for every single pixel it can range from 0 to 255 but for RGB uh, referring to red, green, and blue that will each of those will range from 0 to 255 as well. So something that is relatively new as far as I'm concerned is that Keras offers us a data generator class and this allows you to 
apply data augmentation to your images. And so as you can see here, we can use it to rescale. And so whenever you're working with a machine learning model, it helps to normalize your data. And so we, instead of having pixels that range from 0 to 255, we're going to divide it by 255 so that they range from 0 to 1. We can split our data set into a uh, training and validation set. Shear refers to uh, translations. And so we can slightly shift the images in a certain direction. Zooming would zoom in on the image. And then a horizontal flip would end up shifting the image or rotating the image uh, 90 degrees, I would think. And the benefit to that is it prevents our model from overfitting because as you can imagine, if it's constantly rotating cactuses, well then the model will have to try and really understand what makes a cactus. Right, and uh, so Keras offers us a really easy way of mapping the images in our directory to the results in the CSV that we are giving, or the mapping. And so we can use the train data gen variable that we created back here. Uh, it has a property called flow from data frame. And we'll pass in the data frame, which is the CSV that we loaded earlier. We'll pass it the train directory. The subset will be training as opposed to here, which would be validation. And then we'll have uh, one column, which is the ID of the image. And then the other column will be has the cactus or not. And then our target size, they are 32 by 32 pixel images. And then the class mode will be binary because either the image has a cactus or it doesn't. And I probably forgot to run a whole bunch of stuff here. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, it loaded 14,875 images for what I'm assuming is the training, and then 2,625 for the validation set. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our model. So whenever you're working with Keras, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to, going to use the sequential class. And then here we're going to be using convolutional neural network. So we have conv2d here. We're going to be using a activation function of ReLU. Our input shape is going to be 32 by 32 pixels. And we're going to be using RGB images just because color might end up helping. Um, Another convolution layer, we have max pooling, and then a bunch more. And then eventually we end up flattening the image, putting it through regular neural networks, um, drop out to prevent overfitting, and then it will end up in a single neuron, which will tell us the probability of it containing a cactus or not. So we'll go ahead and run that. And then compiling the model, we use binary cross entropy because this is a binary classification. Either it has a cactus or it doesn't. We'll be using the atom optimizer and then we'll be using accuracy as our metric. So whenever you're working with the image generators, it's going to be a little different in that you won't actually pass in a batch size. And so for those of you who are not really familiar with batch size, the way it works is if you're using a uh, mini batch gradient descent. So the example here I have, if you have 2000 images and then you use a batch size of 10, well then every epoch will have 200 steps. And those are your, so it will compute the gradient 200 times and try and minimize the loss function. So rather than passing in the batch size, we're going to pass in the steps per epoch. So you can just uh, calculate that. And then we'll be using 64 steps for our validation set. 
and then uh, we're going to be using the test generator that we created up here for the validation set for that. So I'll go ahead and run that. And uh, I do have this set up to use my GPU, but it will still take a relatively long time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then come back when this is done. And we're back. And so as you can see, we ended up finishing with 99% accuracy on the training set and then roughly 98% accuracy on the validation set. Um, in all probability, this is overfitting. If we had used the elbow method, then maybe, as you can see, like right here, it starts to, to get worse. So maybe we should have stopped at five epochs. But anyways, moving on, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get it to predict the whether the images in the test set have a cactus or not. And to do that, we are going to load all the images. And then we're going to make sure that the pixels are on the same scale as the images that we use to train our model. In other words, the pixels need to range from zero to one. And so we divide that by 255. So like I said before, we're gonna go ahead and predict those values. And then we're going to create a CSV with those file uh, with those values. And if we just check at the top 10, um, I forgot to change this to float format. But as you can see right here, the first image, it's predicting that it has a cactus with well, there's a 100% chance that it has a cactus, whereas this one, you know, it's a relatively high percentage, but it's not one. And if we run this command, it'll go ahead and create a CSV with those values. And then if the competition were still running, we would go ahead and upload those values. And then what would end up happening is it will check those, it will compare the predicted labels in our CSV with the labels of the test set. And if they're, or it will, they'll give us a score. And when the competition comes to an end, which is normally they last um, at least a few weeks, uh, it will use our model to see whether it does a good job at predicting an entirely new set and the winner of that will end up winning the competition. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.